Hello everyone and welcome to this mid-year book check-in. This year I already read 40 books, which you can see over here. To be honest, I'm very proud of myself because last year I read 57 books overall in the entire year, so I, I'm really happy. I feel like this channel has really impacted my reading in a positive way. I love watching this mid-year book freakout tags, and so I decided that this year I definitely need to do one to kind of tell you about the books that I don't usually get to discuss in every single one of my videos. The first question is, what was the best book of 2023 so far for me? And I don't want to linger on this one too much because the answer is obviously The Wisdom of Crowds. That book was it was so insane. I actually can't talk about it. I recently had a call with one of my friends from Sweden because he finished uh, the series and we were both just having mental breakdowns. And man, Age of Madness is one of the best things I've ever read. And The Wisdom of Crowds is a conclusion like no other. Perfect. Everything down to the last minute details. It's so thought provoking. The way it talks about revolutions and virtue signaling is so nuanced. The characters were fantastic. So I can't recommend it highly enough. The next question is the best sequel of 2023 so far. And to be honest, I haven't read too many sequels and I'm not gonna include any Joe Abercrombie in this because I already talked to him. Uh, as if. I already talked about him at length. So other than that, it, it's got to be the dark forest, right? I mean, the way that book came up with the theory, which is now recognized as a possible ending or solution to the Fermi paradox, that's a huge accomplishment. It basically does everything that its uh, predecessor does, but much better. At the time, I only gave it a four out of five, but I don't know, with hindsight, it's it's really growing on me. I find myself thinking about it a lot more than I thought that I would. The next question is, what's a new release that I haven't read yet, but I really want to? I have two for these. I really want to read The Familiar by Lee Bardugo because she's been really hit or miss for me, so I want to read something by her outside of the Grishaverse, and I'm waiting until Alex Stern gets its conclusion. So I feel like The Familiar will be a really nice one for me to dive into. My other answer is horror movie. I heard about this book from Paperback Journeys, who you should definitely check out on YouTube, and he made a video about his most anticipated uh, releases for 2024, and he mentioned horror movie. He really sold me on it, and so I think I'm going to read this around the spooky season. Uh, okay, this one's gonna be an easy one, because what's my most anticipated release for the second half of 2024? Let's say it all together, guys! Wind and Truth by Brandon Sanderson. It's gonna be coming out during my exam season. <sighs> Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Look, all I'm gonna say is this. I really hope I don't fail my exams because of this book, because I will drop everything just to experience this book. Rhythm of War didn't really do it for me, but man, I'm so excited to see the conclusion of this first half of the Stormlight Archive. Get ready for loads of Sanderson videos at that time. Now, what's my biggest disappointment of the year? <sniffs> Prophet Song! <laughs> I already talked about it at length in my Ireland video, so check that out if you're curious why it was so disappointing to me. But there are a few honorable mentions because I did read quite a lot of disappointing books, and they include Red Sister, Beach Read, Norwegian Wood, Dune Messiah, and Death's End. That's my opinion! But then how about the biggest surprise of the year? Well, for me, it's got to be White Nights by Dostoevsky. It was so perfect. You can read it in one day. It is so short, it's so sweet, and it's so succinct. Because a problem that I had with Crime and Punishment was that I just felt like it was very long-winded and I didn't really care for his ramblings. After the crime, I don't know, things just really went downhill for me, so I DNF'd it just under the halfway point, I think. Maybe I was just too young to read it, so I I think I'm gonna give it another shot in the future, but White Knights really redeemed him in my eyes, so I can't wait to get to more Dostoevsky. Super approachable as well, so if you want to get into classics, I think that's a great one to start with. Favorite new author, debut or one that's new to me? Uh, for this, I have to choose David Mitchell, who wrote Cloud Atlas. The further away I get from that book, the more I like it. It was very experimental. It's a book that's really known for its structure, because we start off in the past, and then we have these six stories, right? And so we start off, I think, in the 18th century, and then we progress through time until we go into this very few 
futuristic post-apocalyptic world and then we go back down and we end up basically finishing the story of the explorer from the 18th century that we started with. It was so interesting to see how these different stories weave uh, through each other and it's truly about how the past influences us today and it also has one of the best love stories that absolutely broke me in recent history so I really do recommend that you read it if you want something different. Newest favorite characters. Again, all of Age of Madness, but moving on, I can't talk about that forever. So I have another character that I want to talk about and that's Aaliyah from Dune. Man, her journey from book one to book two to book three is one of the best character arcs that I've read this year. She's not a character that you always root for, but she has some of the most cathartic moments that I've read. I think that the ideas that Herbert discusses through her were really well done, and the ending of her arc was one of the best things I've ever read. Now we have a question that in the previous years I wouldn't be able to answer, but Joe Abercrombie! <laughs> I'm, I'm truly like a bra... bra uh. The question is, who's my newest fictional crush? <laughs> I would say Giselle because I love Giselle. But then I read Age of Madness and now I can't choose between Giselle and Orso. They never did anything wrong and I will not listen to any criticism of them ever. Giselle is the best of the three characters in the first Law trilogy. Don't come for me, it's a fact for me, okay? He just wanted to do good. I can't choose between Giselle and Orso. Realistically, I think I'd want to be with Orso more. And this is shocking because I don't even like blonde guys, but they're both blonde. So, you know, Joe Abercrombie can really work his magic, can't he? <laughs> okay, moving on. Books that made me happy. For this one, I have to say Beautiful World, Where Are You? Once again, I talked about it in my Irish video. Man, Sally Rooney just writes these characters in a very beautiful way and one that's very relatable to me. Maybe it's because we're at similar moments in our lives, uh, but yeah, just Something about the way she writes made me very happy. Now, a book that made me cry. For this one, I have to say Transcendent Kingdom. And I actually want to use a Joan Didion quote to describe what this book was about. We live entirely by the imposition of a narrative line upon disparate images, by the ideas with which we have learned to freeze the shifting phantasmagoria, which is our actual experience. And that is truly what Transcendent Kingdom is about. It's this tapestry of different scenes from our Main character's life, all the way from her childhood to her visit to her family from Ghana, all the way to her working currently as a neuroscientist and dealing with her mother's depression. This book was truly a standout for me this year that I haven't been able to talk about on this channel because I just didn't have an idea for a video around the book. It is simultaneously beautiful, but it's also very heartbreaking, especially the uh, exploration of family dynamic of this family that immigrated from Africa and them trying to find their footing in America. Gifty, our main character's relationship with her mother later on in the book, that really, really struck a chord with me and it made me cry a lot. What was your favorite book to movie adaptation so far this year? Uh, Dune part two, obviously, but I do have to give an honorable mention to the Fallout TV show because that thing had me crying within the first 10 minutes because it was so perfect and, you know, in this time in which a lot of the things that I love have been destroyed by these bigger companies. War never changes. It was just really good to see an adaptation that understood its source material so well. So yeah, Dune Part 2, Fallout, and I think the three-body problem adaptation, it's not perfect, but I definitely think it's overhated. What books do you really need to read by the end of this year? I have three answers for this. The first one is The Bloodsworn Saga by John Gwynn. The last book in this trilogy is coming out this fall, I believe, and I definitely want to get to that before the end of the year. I mean, I heard that there's this city inside of like a serpent kaiju kind of skull. That sounds so freaking cool and I can't wait to get to it. The other is 112263 by Stephen King. I am currently starting it in preparation for this, so I'm very excited as well. And of course, War and Peace, which is going to be my big mission uh, for this summer, I'm a little bit stressed, but it's okay. Now we come to the part of the video where I get to tag a few people whose answers I'd love to see for these questions. Now, I know that some of these people are a stretch, but I hope you're watching and I really, really want to hear your opinions. 
First of all, I'm tagging Marissa Tallman. I love her videos, they're so cozy, and I think her personality truly shines. I especially love when she does things related to design as well. Paperback Journeys, as I mentioned before, Jaden and Marty from Next Chapter, they're this podcast that just reached 1k and I think they're fantastic. If you're a Brandon Sanderson fan, totally check them out and I'd love to hear their answers for this. Same thing with John at Talking Story. His videos, especially the weekly readers that he does with his son, they're just my favorite thing to watch every Sunday. And of course, Matt's fantasy book reviews, who has motivated me to reading Malazan this year. I'd love to see your guys' answers to all these questions. Anyways, that's all for me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!